Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Ultimate Bucket List. And on today's show, I'm here in the very lovely northern city of Venice. Everything that you think about Venice is true. It's very stereotypical and it's pretty much exactly as advertised. It's a city that's built on a lagoon and whether or not you're here for the interesting architecture, the bridges or the water that surrounds it all, it's a very lovely place to explore indeed and I highly recommend that you come here once in your life to do so. Now even though Venice is a very very big city, it's very very walkable. I highly recommend that you spend the time to actually walk around the city and explore all the interesting buildings and stuff. But when I came, there had been a recent coronavirus outbreak so a lot of the attractions were actually closed. Take for example this one, the music venue here in Venice. But unfortunately, because of the recent coronavirus outbreaks, the government have mandated that everything closes so this was actually closed. More on that later. But one thing that wasn't closed was the gondola service and it's not exactly what I would call cheap. It's about 80 euros for about 30 minutes of somebody pushing you around a bit of water and if you're only here once in your life I highly recommend that you do pay the money and go on a gondola. If there's a whole group of you, i.e. if there's up to 6 of you, the cost is actually fairly reasonable. You could split that 80 euros between 6 of you and it's actually quite decent. Definitely a romantic thing to do, especially if you're coming here with your other half. And you can take these gondolas from pretty much anywhere in the city. If gondolas aren't your thing, there's lots of interesting places to visit, such as bars with bras on the roof, that's also a Celtic fan pub, huh, very strange. And there's lots of interesting shops when you walk around Venice. Literally around every corner you'll see something that's very stereotypically Italian. You'll notice that there's a main body of water that cuts right through Venice and this is the Grand Canal. This is a long S-bend that's about 2.4 miles that goes all the way through the middle of Venice. And the most famous bridge that crosses all of that is this, the Rialto Bridge. One of the most famous bridges in all of the free world. I wouldn't exactly call it a bridge because it's absolutely massive. In fact, it's so big that they've actually built shops all the way up and down it. So you could go up and down and buy jewellery or souvenirs on this bridge. If you do want to take pictures of this bridge, you can either take it from the top of the bridge, from down below where the gondolas are. You can even catch a boat ride and take some of the more picturesque shots that you've seen on the travel programs. But I highly recommend that you actually go into the shopping centre right next to the bridge and climb up onto the roof terrace where you can see a 360 degree view of the entire city. On a nice day like today, it's actually very pretty, especially overlooking the bridge. I highly recommend that you do this, mainly because it's free. There's lots of people walking around in costume today. I actually came at the time of the Venice Carnival. Unfortunately, the government cancelled that as well. That hasn't stopped the revelers dressing up in their costumes and going out onto the streets anyway. It's refreshing to know that not everyone is scared of some stupid virus. And if you want to dress like them, they sell costumes and masks in literally every other shop. You'll be astounded by the amount of places that will sell you stuff like this. So bear in mind you've got lots of souvenirs to take home. The other famous attraction is this, San Marco Piazza or St Mark's Square. This comprises of this, the famous bell tower, the Basilica which unfortunately, surprise surprise, was closed to the public due to the stupid virus and also Doge's Palace which unfortunately was also closed to the public today. Even though these buildings and attractions are closed, it's still pretty cool to walk around anyway. The stonework especially is pretty intricate and you can walk around and ah! Oh wow, okay they're not ghosts, they're just people in costume, great. But it's nice to walk around anyway, especially if you get lovely views over the water like this. It's all very very picturesque and all very very romantic. If you do find people in costume trying to take pictures of themselves, offer to take the pictures for them because more often than not they actually let you take pictures for yourself. Just like this. Right next to Doge's Palace 
is this, the infamous Bridge of Sighs. Now, the Bridge of Sighs is the bridge that prisoners would be hauled over and they'd take one last look at Venice and sigh before being locked away for good. So this is a pretty iconic bridge, and if you manage to get a gondola ride underneath the Bridge of Sighs, that's actually a pretty cool experience. But no matter where you walk in Venice, it's all actually very picturesque. It's pretty stereotypical, with the poles and the gondolas and the lovely, lovely buildings. If you can't afford the gondolas, I highly recommend taking these cream-coloured water buses instead. More on that later. There's always an interesting building or church to look at, and there's actually quite a lot of them, whether it's an interesting church, or interesting bridges, or interesting streets. I highly recommend just walking around and taking in the sights with no agenda whatsoever. You might be surprised what you might find. Including this thing. The other famous bridge that crosses the Grand Canal is the Academica Bridge. It has some lovely views of the Grand Canal and of everything along the canal. It's a foggy day today admittedly so there's not much to see, but it doesn't detract from the fact that this is a cool bridge and you do get some pretty cool sights. This is Santa Maria della Salute. It's a lovely church that's free to go into, but bearing in mind no um, masquerade masks <laughs> upon entry which is kind of a weird requirement. Have a look around the church anyway because it's a very interesting church and again it's free to go inside so that's definitely a bonus. Right next to Santa Maria you do get some lovely views of St Mark's Square across the water, that's that thing behind all the fog, and some of the other islands that are dotted around Venice. Again, surrounded by fog. If you ever wondered how they get those giant statues into these churches, this is how. As I've mentioned before, it's a very romantic city, so if you wanted to take your boyfriend or girlfriend or husband or wife here, that's absolutely fine. Don't be surprised to see people getting married here, as this place is incredibly picturesque. Even the not so nice parts is actually very very pretty, so if you are here for romantic purposes, you're in for an excellent time. Now I actually tried to go into the opera house, which apparently is very very lovely. But as you can imagine, and as you've probably already guessed, when I tried to go in, unfortunately, as you can see from the boards, they've suspended pretty much all the performances because of this stupid virus. So it gives me an excuse to go back one day. It's refreshing to know that not a lot of people are scared of getting a virus or catching diseases from pigeons, like this guy. Huh, brave guy. And one other thing I forgot to mention, Venice is heavily guarded. There's literally police everywhere, so there's no chance of trouble ever breaking out. Even if you have no agenda, walk around Venice anyway, because you'll never know what you might find. You might even find this place, the Venice Arsenal. No, not this kind of arsenal, but this is basically the defense for the city of Venice. And unfortunately, it's shut, but that doesn't detract from the fact that it's actually quite a cool building to walk around. But there's only so many buildings and gondola rides that you can do here in Venice without getting bored. I highly recommend, if you are getting bored, taking a water bus to some of the islands that surround Venice. Not a lot of people realize this, but Venice is actually a lagoon city that's surrounded by very solid islands. And you'll need to take the water buses in order to access them. These water buses, as you can imagine, are fairly easy to navigate around and they'll take you to pretty much every island. A lot of travel guides will advocate that you go to every island, but in my experience, there are islands that are more interesting than others. So I highly recommend that you go, first and foremost, to the island of Murano. Murano is famous for its glass. World famous, in fact. The finest glass in the world is made here, and as you can imagine, the finest glass in the world isn't cheap. In fact, you'll be paying 60 euros for a tumbler or 400 euros for a set. That's how expensive Murano glass is. And some of this stuff belongs in an art gallery. Seriously. You could actually go into glass factories and pay a small admission fee to actually watch how it's made. And I highly recommend that you do that. It seems like a bit of a tourist grab, but it's actually very interesting. But the town of Murano itself is very lovely. It's very walkable. You could circumnavigate Murano in about 20 minutes or half an hour. Especially on a nice day like today, it's actually a very picturesque town to walk around. With its interesting buildings, the water that runs straight through it all, 
and some of the architecture, including some of the churches and cathedrals here, are actually quite interesting to look at. Most of the time, it's free anyway, so if you're looking to kind of save money and have something to do, I highly recommend walking around Murano. Just don't buy too many bits of glassware, because that stuff's not cheap. The other island I highly recommend that you visit is the island of Burano. Now, Burano is home to Italy's lace making industry. So if you're interested in anything made of lace, such as lace curtains, lace clothing, etc., this is the place to go to. Whilst I'm stocked up on bras and thongs at the moment, thank you very much, if you did want to buy lace here, it's actually very, very cost effective. The other thing that Burano is famous for are its various colorful houses. Seriously, this is possibly the most colorful place that you'll ever visit in your life. All of these houses are painted in what I can only describe as day glow colors. And they're painted in bright colors because it helps the fishermen, especially with the sea fog, find their way home at night. So that's quite interesting. Even in the back streets, all of the houses are painted in some bright color. You'll see some very interesting things here in Burano, such as the Leaning Tower of Burano. No, that's not a camera trick, it's actually falling over. I highly recommend that you walk around the town and just have a look at all the kooky houses that are around, because it's actually quite interesting. I'm kind of tempted to paint my house bright orange now. Now, whilst that was interesting, the other non-interesting islands include the islands of Torcello, which admittedly, there's not that much there. There's one very long canal, a restaurant, a bridge without any sides, and at the end of it all, there's this church which, surprise surprise, not open. And that's about it. There's really nothing here in Torcello to hold your attention, so I highly recommend that you don't come here even if somebody offers to take you. Also that's not worth it, the island of Lido. This is the venue for the Venice Film Festival, but when the festival's not on, there's things to see such as various buildings, a free beach which is very lovely, especially on a nice day like today, but that's about it. There's actually nothing else on Lido apart from a very lovely beach. The islands directly south of the city of Venice, don't bother, there's really not much there. And a lot of travel guides recommend going to the Jewish ghetto, which is a ghetto. I'm not entirely sure why they'd recommend this. I was thoroughly disappointed because, you know, it's a ghetto. It's kind of like going to New York and saying, oh yes, I want to go to Harlem. So I highly recommend that you don't come here. If you happen to visit San Giorgio, the church on an island, I highly recommend that you visit that. It's a basic stereotypical church, free to enter of course, but apart from that, it's just a church on an island. But the one thing I do recommend that you do is the Cimitero, the cemetery that's located on an island. Yes, I know, I know, it's not a tourist attraction. It's a place of the dead and I should respect that. It's actually kind of cool to walk around the cemetery the size of a national park. There are actually famous people that are buried here, the most famous, in my opinion, being the composer, Igor Stravinsky. But it's actually kind of cool to walk around the graves and take a look at the city of Venice from afar. But overall, Venice is exactly as advertised. Whether it's the fancy buildings, the gondola rides across town, or the very, very narrow streets, you'll be in awe at the fact that people actually live like this out here. Okay, Nin, I'm sold. What do I need to do? Well you'll need to get here to the city of Venice. It's served by two international airports, the closest being Marco Polo. To get from Marco Polo to Venice, I highly recommend that you take the ATVO shuttle bus from platform number three, all the way to Piazzale Roma, which is the main bus station in Venice. Buying tickets is easy, just go onto a ticket machine and have it validated, and literally away you go. And it roughly takes about half an hour from start to finish. Venice is a very walkable city and you can walk pretty much everywhere, but if you do need to get around some of the islands, I highly recommend that you take the water bus. Now, the water bus stops are here in bright yellow, and to buy a ticket, I highly recommend that you go to one of the machines, select English of course, and I actually bought one of the tourist two-day passes because I was only here for a couple of days. Once it spits out your ticket, all you need to do then, on every stop, is to validate it on these white units. 
and you must validate it before you get on the boat, otherwise you will be fined even if you have a valid ticket. You'll also be fined if you actually step on the pontoon without a valid ticket as well, so they actually take this stuff really seriously. And to navigate, it's basically like a metro system just on water, so it'll take you a while to figure out but you generally will. Obviously you can ride a gondola everywhere but that's uber uber expensive, and alternatively you can hire water taxis but they're not much cheaper, so I highly recommend using the water bus if you really don't want to walk. The cost to do the attractions? Well obviously most of the attractions were shut while I was here, as you can imagine from a very expensive tourist centric city, the hotels, food, souvenirs etc can all add up if you want it to. So I highly recommend watching your budget, but at the same time know that you'll have to spend the money at some point or another. Is there anything else I need to know? Yes, there are various laws that you will inadvertently break while you're here in Venice. Such as littering, not validating your ticket, sitting or lying down in St Mark's Square, or eating and drinking in the wrong places, and the police can issue fines literally on the spot, so be very very cautious of that. And obviously, as previously mentioned, if you are going to go on a gondola and you don't want to blow 80 euros for 30 minutes, find somebody else that will share the boat ride with you. If you do want the boat to yourself then, unfortunately you're just going to have to pay the money. If you have enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, share and subscribe, comment on the comment section below and if you've got any other ideas for bucket list suggestions, tweet them at me, if you get enough suggestions I'll go ahead and do that. So guys, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next episode.